Tell me about Sid. Well, for, for so many people, uh, you know, a lot of people never came to the track. Their, their memory off the 500 is listening to it on the radio. And Sid Collins was the chief announcer from, from uh, he was on the air actually as early as 48, but by 51, he was anchoring the broadcast. And, and uh, the first year, it, it was still with the Mutual Radio Network uh, in 51, they weren't going to do it. And so uh, WIBC uh, picked up, because most of the people that had been involved with the broadcast when it was Mutual Radio Network were, were WIBC anyway. And so they said, well, let's just do the race ourselves in 51 and then make it available to anybody that wants to pick it up. Then in 52, then the Indianapolis Motor Speedway Radio Network was formed with Sid as the chief announcer. And they went from 26 stations in 1952 to, I think, like, I don't know, 60 or 70 in 53. But by 54, it was on the Armed Forces Network. And it was basically, it, it went, you know, leaps and bounds and eventually became something like over a thousand radio stations but by 54 55 it was being heard you know all over the world and sid was the voice and he um more than doing just play by play uh he was big on word picture and he what he would tell the announcers was um you know we're, we're uh, the the people that hear us can't see the race and so we have to we have to paint a word picture for them. So he said, give them all kinds of color. And I remember specifically, he'd say, if the car is red, tell them that. And if you know that it's candy apple red, tell them that. And if the driver's got a yellow helmet, tell them that. You know, just paint a picture. And so he he, he didn't know a great deal about racing. He liked the people, but by his own admission, he said, I really don't understand a lot of stuff about it. But he said, what I like to do is to think of myself as, as sort of like I'm the conductor. And uh, all the fellows in the turns and the other voices, they are knowledgeable. And I call upon them. I'll ask them questions to, to you know, to, to educate all of us on, on what's going on. And so anyway, he, he did the race from... Um, well, as I say, he was on the he was on the air as early as forty eight. He co anchored in fifty and then was the anchor from fifty one and then the formation of the radio network in fifty two, all the way through until seventy six was the last race that he did. And by that time he was in failing health. He was afflicted with uh, Lou Gehrig's disease and he took his life actually on May second of nineteen seventy seven, which uh, I never thought about is uh the uh, anniversary when we're doing this. I never thought of that. Oh my that. God, you're yeah. right. But uh, which, which at that time was when the, the, uh, the track was getting ready to open. But anyway, uh, he was, um, uh, I personally owe him a great deal of gratitude because he took me under his wing from the time I showed up and then, uh, you know, put me, actually had to be honest, a guest in 1964. And then in uh, 65, he gave me a position to just, uh, you know, do historical retrospective is what we call it. And I'm still doing that. And then also the program that is now the talk of Gasoline Alley, the bloodlines of that go back to a program that was on in 1966 that was his idea.